The Mood Tracker series continues. I'm striking a serious posture because this is serious business. We've got to talk about Nebraska. I was over on Husker 24-7. I had to go do some of my market research. I came on the board and I said, I need help. Because let, let me just put it all out there. A lot of Nebraska fans have been in our inbox, and they've been asking us to do a Mood Tracker segment for Nebraska. And I kind of kicked it down the road a little bit. We, To be honest with you, we had some bigger brands to do. But I wanted to get to Nebraska. I want to get to Colorado, Michigan State. I got a lot of them I want to get to. So it's Nebraska time now. But here's what led me over to the board over on Huskers 24-7. Anytime someone asks me to do a mood tracker, I always respond, okay, what's your mood towards the program? So I've been asking the Nebraska fans on Twitter and the email inbox on Instagram. When they ask me, I say, all right, it's on the to-do list. What's your mood? I got moods all over the place. I got, for, for every different direction a hand can point on a clock, I got a different feedback mood for Nebraska. So I go over to the board and I say one word or one phrase, give me your mood. It was all over the place. I know this is going to shock you. There was very little positive feedback. There was not a whole lot of, you know, eternal optimism, nothing but sunshine, no clouds, nothing going to dull me. Nothing, it wasn't, wasn't like that. Here's what it was, though. It was a lot of, a kind of a mixture of, I don't know, cautious optimism at best, I think was the most cheery tone, but more so it was, there were a lot of people who were fed up, there were a lot of people who were very frustrated, there were a lot of people who were searching, and here's kind of what I circle back around to. When you're on top, you never want to hear anyone tell you, well, you know college football is cyclical. You don't want to hear that because you're on top, so you want it to last forever. There was a period of time where Nebraska was on top of this sport. Bama's there right now. No one in Tuscaloosa, Alabama is interested in you telling them, this is a cyclical sport, guys, but it is, at least when you have the capability of winning at the highest level, it's going to be cyclical. However, think about the shoe being on the other foot. At Nebraska right now, they are very much down. They are nowhere near, and they can't even see the top of that mountain, much less think about being there. Well, they want more than anything in the world for that, that quote to be true. They're hoping and praying college football is cyclical. They keep on looking around every corner wanting to know when the worm's going to turn. And it's not turning right now. Now, many of you believe that the fate of Nebraska really started snowballing downhill when Bill Callahan got brought in. <laughs> you know, you asked Bill Callahan, Bill, what do you think about Nebraska's tradition and identity? And he said, never heard of her. We're going to do it my way. A lot of people believe that's when it kind of took a turn. I'm not here to rehash history. What I am here to say is it's never recovered. The Mike Riley experiment, now Scott Frost, Scott Frost is an interesting concept, though, because when Scott Frost got hired, it checked all the boxes. When Scott Frost got hired, that made the most sense on paper. That's what you'd call a Grand Slam hire times 10 for Nebraska. No one looked at that with any skepticism. Everyone looked at it and said, look at what that guy's doing at Central Florida, and he's one of ours, so he wants to be here or else he wouldn't be here. And so you look around. I'll grant you, kind of like with Jeff Collins at Georgia Tech, willing to give him a grace period, willing to allow him to get his culture ingrained and, and his systems and whatnot. Well, now it's year three, and so you look around and you say, where are the results? Is this the year? Is this the year we're supposed to expect results? I'm, I keep setting my watch. Where's, where's the cycle? Where's the up part of the cycle for us? Because we've just been kind of at the bottom. We, we want to cycle up now. Well, here's the dangerous part. Because there was another word that kept popping up on the Husker 24-7 board. It's the A word, but it has nothing to do with a donkey. It's the most dangerous word in sports. We whisper it around here. We don't even like to say it out loud. It's apathy. It's never been a problem at Nebraska. Nebraska, even when the record indicates otherwise, they pack that stadium. It's, it's a phenomenal atmosphere. They are world-renowned for the environment they create, for the culture they create there. No one speaks ill of the Nebraska culture, of the Nebraska experience, and you look at that place, and granted, I'm looking from afar. I'm in Nashville. I grew up in Georgia. I'm looking at Nebraska. I've never been to a game there. I want to change that, but I've never been to a game there. But I look there, and I say, apathy would never set in there. Apathy meaning basically you just don't carry it away. You're just fine walking away. Apathy, here's what apathy's like. Apathy is you wake up at 9 a.m. on a Saturday in the fall, and you go get some yard work done, and then you go take a nap, and you wake up at like 2.45, and you say, do we play today? Oh, man, we had the noon game. Oh, it's, it's already at halftime. You didn't even know the game was on. That's apathy. Apathy is just not, it's just not setting your fall calendar in life to the day-to-day uh, -day 
goings on in the football department or, or basketball or whatever the case may be. Apathy is not set in there yet, but I had a lot of you tell me I'm close because the way you're looking at it, and I don't blame you, is if this sport is cyclical, if there's still a shot for us to matter on the national stage, Scott Frost will be the guy. And if Scott Frost doesn't get it done, maybe this sport isn't cyclical. Maybe it's like My Hometown, that song by Bruce Springsteen, when it says Foreman says these jobs are going, boys, and they ain't coming back. Maybe the sport has just gone and it's not coming back. Maybe the dynamics changed. Now, I would look at that, because I know that's a lot of doom and gloom. I would look at that and say, if Iowa State can do it, trust me, Nebraska can do it. But I understand the sentiment of you looking and saying, if Scott Frost can't do it, who in the world are we going to get up here? Because Matt Campbell's don't grow on trees. That's a one in a generation, one in a million type deal. If Scott Frost can't do it, maybe it's time to throw my hands up. Maybe it's time to go, I don't know, just worry about the Chiefs or something like that. Just, just pull, for, pull for the Broncos, whoever in the world you guys are pulling for up there. I hope it never comes to that. But I do understand the sentiment. And so that's why those two programs, I just linked them up. I just said Georgia Tech and Nebraska. Watch those. Those, those are a couple of third-year head coaches right now that have not so far delivered a return on the immense emotional and financial investments that the university and the culture they're around has invested into them, but hopefully it does come this year. And the thing about it is you don't need 10 or 11 wins. You just want to see a competitive product on the field to where at least now you start looking around the corner and nothing's come around the corner yet, but there's this bright light to where, you know, it's like a train way, way down the tracks. It's about to come around the bend and you can see the light. If we could just see a light after this year with Nebraska, we'll take that. Right now it's just darkness and darkness and darkness as far as the eye can see. And so I get it. I understand why the mood is that way. We, at least here, are pulling for you guys, though.